So Apple had their big fall event today, unveiling the new Apple Watches, iPhones, AirPods, Pro 3s, and a ton of accessories. But for this one, I wanna talk about the RC that got released and some new watch faces we finally got that are now backwards compatible. First things first, let's just go ahead and jump into the watch itself and do our final health check. If you follow the channel, you know we had been having inconsistent battery life here with beta nine. Hopefully that is all fixed in the RC. Let's go into settings, general, and about, and we can see the final build number for the RC here is 23R351. So we are here, no letters at the end. This should be the final version that goes public. However, sometimes it is tweaked a little bit and you will still receive that update if there is another one that differs from the RC. And then for the final update, like I was saying, for battery health, let's jump down here and see our final capacity as it sits at 90%. We definitely felt this, it's definitely not as strong as what we had two years ago, but 10% in two years of battery degradation is not terrible. So I am gonna be getting rid of this. I do have an Ultra 3 ordered in that new black casing. I think it looks very clean. And again, if you're not familiar, the pre-orders actually went live for the new Apple Watches today at time of recording after the keynote finished. So yeah, you can actually go ahead and get these now. So as you can see, jumping around, we still have slight lag on here, nothing crazy. Everything is opening though, as you would anticipate luckily, and seems to be working pretty smoothly. More excitingly, let me grab the phone for this take a look, we now have some new watch faces here from the Apple event that they showed off. And you can see Waypoint is right here with all of those new colorways and then Flow that they were talking about as well as Exactograph. Those are gonna be the main new ones. I really think this one looks pretty sharp, at least in the video montage as they put out. And I'm gonna go ahead and add all these at the end to the watch so you can see what they look like. Here is flow in that color pattern. Let me just go ahead and hit add now for this one. Let's go back. Here is waypoint as well. We'll add that one. And you can see there were actually a couple of different options for a digital and analog look, depending on what you wanted. Flow had a couple of typeface interfaces for the numerals and how they look. And if you want a background on and off there, and then lastly, the exacto graph that we went to, you can see you have a couple of different styles there that was being shown as well. So we'll go ahead and add this one. And now you can see exactly what they look like. So let's get the Apple Watch and take a look. And you can see the first one right here is flowing. You can see the seconds counting. I am super excited to see how these watch faces look on the new Ultra 3 since they have an AOD that can now display the seconds as well. Same technology that was used in the S10 series. So that was one of them. Let's go back to the other one here. This is gonna be one where you can actually select waypoints and add in the middle. You can long press and edit it. And again, you can do this on your watch or the iPhone. So POI is points of interest filter. You can now tap and manage these and put whatever you want here. You have map suggestions. You can see up ahead, you have maps, places, waypoints for the compass. All of those can be customized as you'd like. The dial style, night mode if you want it on auto, on or off. And then the color ways you can sift through. I do like the multicolor one, so I'm gonna leave it as that. And then your complications you can add as well. So we'll go ahead and set that like that. And now you can see how it's been updated and what that looks like. You can see the compass moves as needed. Again, that's not too unique. We had that in another watch face. And then scrolling over, here is flow. You can see that liquid kind of moves around as you tilt your Apple Watch to give it the design like it is actually alive and moving. I think it looks pretty cool. If you long press here to customize, you can see you have those couple of typefaces. I kind of like that. It's a little more legible background, on or off, and then the colors you can choose from as well. If you want something different than the one I selected, light blue, terracotta, 
tons of options here. But what you can see that is missing is there are no compilations here. This is kind of what you get. Let's go ahead and lock this, select it, and yeah. Definitely much more of a liquid glass look, but a minimal watch face as far as usability goes. So again, no new features here. It is purely an RC. Let me go ahead and let that charge for a minute. Let's talk about what Apple announced for the Ultra 3, the Series 11, and the new SE Model 3. So starting off with the Apple Watch, they did announce the Apple Watch SE, the Series 11, and the Ultra 3. They started off with the Apple Watch Series 11, really preaching on the new resistance to scratches and cracks. They talked a lot about what this thinner design, even though it barely looks thinner, uh, that was an improvement here. A couple of new watch faces that they do have added here, as you can see, and this one looks really nice, I do have to say. New bands as usual, a few new features for health measuring. They did announce the aluminum variants and then also recycled titanium variants this year as well. They do look good. I do like the band options as well that are going to be coming. And then also, as traditional, you have new Apple Watch partnerships with Nike's bands. And then they do have the Hermes bands as well with that unique watch face. And then in addition to that, you can see here the hypertension notification was a main selling point for this new version. It does have fast charging and 24 hours of battery life. Now, beyond that also, we do have the SE here, and you can see it did now also gain an always on display, which I do think is a great addition, in addition to being four times more crack resistant as well. And what I was most excited for is what you can see here as we talked about the new Ultra 3. It looks very identical, but it does come with an increased screen area. They shrunk the bezels and giving it the largest display on an Apple Watch. Same two finishes as last year, so nothing new there, just a slightly larger watch face. You are getting some new watch faces as well here. Nothing crazy, I think. I like this one that kind of shows you points of interest that you have. And then obviously satellite SOS for two years included with your purchase. Who knows what the price will be after that. And then also, as you can see here, a couple new band options for the Ultra as well. I really do like the ocean green one. That is the one we are going to be picking up and then all their partnerships with Hermes as well right here. So that is what's new today in the world of Apple. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you picking up any of these new Apple watches or what's your thoughts in general on these latest hardware offerings from Apple? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.